When it comes to grilling, all grills are not created equal. Today we are going to break it all down for you and talk about the finer points of barbecuing. Joining me now is Lori Green, the owner of Elizabeth Richard Gifts. Nice to have you back here, Lori. Thank you very much, Teresa. Uh, we have to mention you have five grills. You are really like a grilling expert. I love to grill. <laughs> you know I don't what know you're doing. I'm, I don't know if I'm a grilling expert, but I do <laughs> love to grill. My dad loved to grill and he, um, he kind of passed that tradition along to me. So I am the griller in the house, not my husband. Hey, and, um, okay. I use all my grills. I use them for different reasons. And um, so I'm here to share a couple of tips. This weekend, we've got a, a function going on at the store and it's yeah. revolving around barbecue and I'm smoking some meat to bring into oh, wow. the, the function. So we are going to talk about smoking meat and I'm going to break it down. And it's really not as hard as it sounds. And it's not that complicated. And you can get a great result at home with some simple tools and some simple tips. I love that. And speaking of tools and tips, you have all that stuff in your store. Anything you might need. We do. We do. Just about. Just, we really are. For the way you live your life, that's what we say around the store and we mean it. And we have uh, some video right now of some of the gifts there. It's a great gift shop. Uh, I registered there. You have china. You really have anything a bride could have could want. Anything that anybody could want. And, and that's true. We're a great source now. Uh, we're really busy these days with teacher gifts and Father's Day gifts. Oh, that's right. So just because we're, you know, seeming to be a lady store doesn't mean that we don't have things that the guys enjoy. So come on in, do your Father's Day shopping, get those last minute teacher gifts. We're here for you. Very good. And uh, you could spend an hour in there at least looking around, at if least. not more. And if you spend longer than that, I'll, I will put you on the payroll. That's perfect. I'll have you wrap <laughs> some gifts for me. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's slide down here and talk to me what uh, we have. All right. So as I said, I'm going to be smoking some uh, some pork and some brisket and some chicken this weekend for our event on Saturday. And um, I am lucky enough to have a smoker at my house. I have one of these uh, uh, like big green eggs. It's actually called a grill dome. <laughs> okay. And um, it's really cool. And so there's two different types of charcoal out on the market. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you is about the differences between the charcoal. You've got regular charcoal briquette and you've got what's called lump charcoal. In the smoker at a low and slow temperature, you're always going to want to use this funny kind of lump charcoal. Okay. I know it doesn't look that pretty, but believe me, it, it's going to burn longer, so you're not going to have to add as much charcoal in the, the whole process. Because when you're smoking meat on a smoker, mm -hmm. you really have that going out there for five, seven hours, you know, sure, even like longer an all day sometimes. Thing. Sure, it's an all-day thing. So you want to make sure that you're adding um, charcoal as little as possible, because you want to be working on your tan while the, the meat <laughs> like is going, the sound of that. which is what I was doing this weekend. But um, <laughs> the other thing you're going to want to make sure that you have um, available when you're smoking is you're going to want different kinds of wood chip. You're going to want wood chips and you're also going to want chunks of wood. The chunks of wood you're going to lie on your hot coals after you've soaked them okay. and that's going to create this wonderful intense smoky flavor and uh, it's going to make your meat just absolutely delicious. Um, the wood chips you're going to also soak but you're going to put them in this nifty little uh, aluminum pan that mm -hmm. you can get even a, a loaf pan would work fine and you're going to nestle that down in your um, your grill or your smoker um, and that too is also going to impart a lot of flavor but it's two different kinds of wood and I do use both the chunk and the chip. Okay, good to know. This is what uh, it, I use to start my fire up. This is a chimney starter. I do not like to use lighter fluid, Teresa, because it smells funny. And mm. also, I think it leaves a funny taste on all the food. So what I like to do instead is use a little bit of paraffin wax. And this is just a little paraffin wax cube from Weber. Okay. Um, you put it right into your smoker chimney or your uh, your starter chimney. You put your charcoal on top of it. You light your, your wax chip and you're all set. Oh. You can also make your own. I have a Boy Scout at home, so we do a lot of things by <laughs> hand. And if you get yourself some uh, paraffin wax you can make your own little fire fire starters for half the money okay uh, a nifty little thing that I've picked up along the way is this Himalayan salt rock here and you think to yourself what the heck is that going to do well, I'll tell you what it's going to do it's going to give you a lot of flavor inside of your uh, your grill you're going to nestle this down in your grill and you're going to leave it there all season long you're not going to take really? the thing out at the bottom of the grill at like, the bottom of the grill where you put your coals and yeah. stuff and if you have a gas grill you're going to put um, we do sell flatter ones too this one is great for a smoker because of the shape of a smoker you know it, it allows you to get it in there deeper but um, you're going to put it in there you're going to just leave it and it's going to um, slowly eat away. It takes about two years to eat away oh. and it's going to give you all kinds of flavor and your meat is going to be extra juicy and it really does work. So give it a try. It's not that big of an investment. The smaller like home size one is $28 oh, and you can easy. pick it up at the shop. Okay. Make sure that you have a lighter with you. That's Helpful. important too. <laughs> and we've got lighters at the store with little rhinestones on them. So how fun is that? It's for the lady grillers because I know there's lots of them out there. Get your tongs. I've got these great metal locking tongs. These are from Queasy Pro. They're they're very handy. They're great for um, handling the hot grill. Great uh, when you're adding more charcoal. Mm -hmm. Make sure you've got good, strong forks for pulling your meat apart. 
Get yourself some disposable gloves because you want to make sure that your hands are nice and clean and sanitized. You're going to want to pick up some great rub, some barbecue sauce, and don't forget some margarita mix. Fat Mamas, that's the way to go, huh? Yeah, yeah we found that. It's a company out of Mississippi and is absolutely delicious, no aftertaste, and uh, this will give you an afternoon of fun. All right, so your salad is going to go very well, right? It is. It's going to go great with what I've got uh, on the menu for Saturday. So we're going to start out with um, some couscous, and this is about four servings, about two cups of dried couscous. This doesn't look like the regular couscous that you might see like in the box mixes. It's an Israeli couscous, so it's a bigger pearl. Okay. You can also use barley, um, you can use um, quinoa, you can use a variety of different um, grains to start out with. But this is so simple. What I'm going to do is take a bunch of roasted vegetables, Teresa. I roasted these last night, and because the rain didn't cooperate, um, I did roast them inside. And, and the inside, That's loud, I, just, yeah, I just put it on a, a, a baking pan, put it in the oven at 400, so you're all set. But I roasted up two ears of corn. I roasted up roughly about um, a cup to two cups of cherry tomatoes. Ooh, I cut great. those cherry tomatoes in half before I roasted them, and I sprinkled them with a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, and incidentally, I did not use any olive oil because I didn't want to add any fat to it. I'm trying to uh, get my family to be more conscientious and watch what they eat. So um, it starts with the preparer, the food preparer. It's true, right? <laughs> um, I've also got some roasted red pepper. And I've got some roasted peaches. I couldn't um, figure out what that was. Um, those are some okay. nice roasted white peaches. And um, again, when I took the skins off, I roasted them right into the oven. And they're going to give the salad a great sweet flavor because what we're going to put in here next, Teresa, mm -hmm. is going to give it a little bit of heat. I've got here on this plate, I've got um, one shallot that I've cut up and, um, into nice little squares. I also have two jalapeno peppers. Oh, I did hot? seed them. Okay. Um, so it shouldn't be too spicy, but it should give it a nice little heat. It'll play very nicely off of the peaches. And then I've got um, a handful of fresh cilantro that I also uh, chopped up. So I'm going to add those as well. So really, it's the chopping that's going to take a little bit of time, that's but right. all in all, this is very easy. Oh, it's so, so simple. And then I'm going to um, just add a little bit of green onion as well. And you can add all the way down to the whites, Teresa. So I'm just going to give this a quick chop. Okay. And I'm going to put my bowl closer to me and just toss that right in. Okay. And I've also got some red onion. I don't know how you feel about red onion, Teresa, but I love red onion in the summertime. Because it adds a little color too, right? It does. It adds a little bit of color and the, the flavor is a little bit different than uh, your run-of-the-mill white onion. Um, so I like it. I use it an awful lot. I use it in salsas and I use it in guacamole and I use it in all my different summer salads. So again, I'm just going to add that. And I've used two red onions for this salad. Okay. Um, so I'm going to chop that up. And then I'm going to make my dressing. Now, the dressing couldn't be simpler. Okay. All right. Um, we've got a quarter cup of lime juice. We've got three cloves of garlic that we're going to put right into our food processor. We've got a tablespoon of sugar. And we're going to measure out some vinegar. We're going to use a quarter of a cup of um, white wine vinegar. And okay. I've got this Pinot Grigio white wine vinegar to give it a little bit of added flavor. Add that to my food processor. I'm going to add a half of a cup of olive oil. I'm using um, a higher quality olive oil because we're not going to cook with it. We're going to eat it, so we want to make sure that it's got all of the flavors that it could possibly have. All right. Well, I'm going to let you mix that up. I know that you have a new blog up about grilling. We could find that. And, of course, you have the barbecue happening this Saturday. Yes, we've got the barbecue happening on Saturday from 11 to 2, but the shop itself is open from 10 to 4, so come on up and see me. We've got some goodies for everybody to walk away with if you get there early enough. And you'll get to sample all of our treats and uh, all of our barbecue stuff. Sounds good. Pretty easy to get there. Elizabeth Richard Gifts is uh, right on the Waterbury Middlebury line off exit 17. Great place to do some shopping and obviously have a little lunch on Saturday. Uh, Lori, thanks for being here. Thanks Thank for you, cooking. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> all right. Still to come, we'll meet the author of a new children's book who is hoping to inspire kids to get off the couch and get moving when Star returns.